a mega day with LP Endurance. So we're doing a two hour and 10 minute long ride. We're following that with about an hour long run. We're doing lots of awesome learning. We get a strength session and mobility with Adam, some nutrition learning, and then we finish off the day with a swim set with Bronwyn. So awesome day and lots of fun people to do it with. in sport nutrition and I'm co-owner of Blueprint Nutrition. And we're doing kind of a full hydration assessment today which is kind of fun. Um, so everyone um, took their weight before they got on the bike uh, to see what their pre-workout weight was and then they'll take their weight again afterwards to see the weight loss. So we want to see that will help us determine what their sweat rate is um, and, and their percent of weight loss. So we want to avoid losing too much weight because then that can have negative performance outcomes. So we're going to kind of look, take a look at that. The other piece that we're doing is looking at the sodium concentration in their sweat. So we have our whole setup here. Um, so we put patches on their forearms. Um, and so those patches get filled with sweat. Uh, throughout the workout and then we take them off we put the put them in these little syringes here and then um, we extract the sweat from the patches stick it in our little handy machine here um, and then it gives us a reading for how many milligrams of sodium are in each liter of sweat um, and so then that combined with the sweat rate will tell us how much sodium approximately they're losing per hour and then that can help inform kind of like a personalized hydration plan. Um, so super helpful information to have for endurance athletes because throughout the course of an endurance event, obviously you're sweating a lot, often losing a lot of sodium, but it's hard to know exactly how much to replace it with, right? So this can be really helpful to, to have a better sense of personalized recommendations. Um, all right, guys, what we're gonna do, we're gonna opt to start at least to go to the neighborhood. I changed it a little bit. It's just gonna be a square loop, which will run a couple times on the warm up, anyways. It's like about a 1K loop. Um, we'll head out there, do a couple easy loops there. Just know it is a little bit snowy on that loop. It's clearing in the middle pretty quickly, so like it's a pretty quiet area. So don't be afraid to run a little bit in the middle or find good sections there, but also be willing to adjust pace and just go off effort if need be today. Um, but our workout, do something like you're a bit warmed up from the bike, so maybe somewhere in the like eight to 15 minutes of warm up, kind of easy range. You can attempt, if, it, if the footing's good, to do a couple like 30 second kind of pickups uh, with, call it like a minute easy between them, just getting kind of the legs warmed up for the run. And then for our main sections today, we kind of have two parts to it. Um, I'll bring the board out in case you need to reference it after, but for the first section you can do two or four, two to four of these, so you go four minutes at kind of like a threshold pace, which is like, call it like a seven out of 10 effort, just a good solid pace. Nice, 90 seconds easy between there, so shuffle or walk if you want to during it. Um, so anywhere two to four of those. And then our second section, we're going a little bit faster, so again, you can do two to four of these also, but 90 seconds, more like a 5K effort, so call it an eight to nine, sort of out of 10. And again, 90 seconds easy between those. Make sure you get at least five minutes easy running before you come back here to cool down. But again, do what you can if it's like, you're slipping and sliding everywhere, just make it an easy run, like don't injure yourself over it, but get in what you can. It's gonna, I think it's gonna get better as we go along, just because the sun's on there. But. Can you take extra rest between the two of them right here? Um, yeah, sure, take an extra two to three minutes if you'd like. <laughs> if you feel it in control, you can go right into the next one too. So, so you can either, yeah, go to into the next one or take a couple extra minutes. Uh, but anywhere, that should take about somewhere in the 40 to 50 minute range, depending on how many you do. So if you haven't done crazy long stuff, don't be afraid to shorten it, or if you want to go up to an hour, just try and be back here and ready to go for just after 11 for the mobility stuff. 
Sound good? Make sure you bring some fuel along if you feel like you're bonking on the road. Our loop is right there, so you can always come back and grab some stuff. But bring some fuel along. It's a long day. I'll bring this along with us as well. It's just a square loop. Okay, so band pull apart. You can go as narrow or as wide as you want. The narrower you go, the harder it is. You're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together. One, two, three, four, five. 20 reps and then hand it off. Do 20 and then hand your band off to someone else who needs it. Feels good. You gotta get arrow, this is it right here. Arrow position. Jess, what about you? How many times a week do you do strength work? I do two times a week for strength, and then I do one mobility session, and then one yoga session. Nice. And do you also have a cap on the weights that you can do? Yes. <laughs> I do not lift heavy. Would you... If you didn't have the cap, would you lift heavier? I not anymore. Like, is it needed? It's uh, you know what? Not anymore. No, it's not needed because I'm fine. one thing I told Adam is that I snack on the weights throughout the day. I don't do one big weight session. I build it into my strength day. So then I'll break from work. I'll do a twenty minute strength session. Go back, do another twenty minutes, and keep moving. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it's, I keep at home weights. Nice. Off season though, when I'm here, yeah. Yeah, I need I need caps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go too hard, too competitive. Well, it's it's good for me just to focus on form, focusing on form rather than the weight, and then adding a weight once the form is there. So that's been my focus for the last few years. So yeah, it's fun. Weightlifting is really important though. It helps. Yeah all the other things and then you don't break down in the other. Makes sense. So this is the final leg of the LP Mega Day. Um, we're swimming for about an hour. Um, I'm here to on deck coaching. Uh, we're going to start with kind of a general warm up. We're going to move to some kind of skills based stuff, working on feel for the water. And then we're going to teach everyone how to do flip turns. Um, it really just flip turns obviously you're not doing them in a race but it helps like with body position and understanding all that how you feel in the water and then we're gonna end with some fun In the lounge. Yeah. Coach <laughs> Spark, what do we do today? Oh man, what an amazing day. We had over 30 who came in, in and out throughout the course of the day through all the different disciplines. Awesome turnout for our first ever mega day. Yes. And uh, what was your favorite part of the day? Oh, I'd have to say the swim was just a great way to finish the day with some hilarious relay races and uh, getting to jump off the blocks. So I think the swim was a nice uh, cherry on top of the day. Uh, what are some events that are coming up for LP Endurance in the next coming months? So we have some big races coming up first. Triathlon season kicking off for a number of people in April and May. Um, and then events wise, we're going to have our LP training camp, which is in early June. And that's going to finish off that weekend with the Milton Sprint Try, kind of the start of the Ontario summer triathlon season. So we'll have a uh, yeah, big group out training that week and finish it off with a fun sprint triathlon that weekend. So that's kind of the uh, events over the next number of months. Nice. And then you're going to Oceanside in a couple of weeks. 
Yes, I'm going to be working there that weekend, but it's going to be uh, Jess's first pro race that weekend with a really stacked field. So going to be a very exciting weekend. To That's usually the kickoff for the kind of international triathlon season, if you want to call it. Yeah, what are going to be, going to be the keys of success? keys to success for just for that race yeah being a first pro race it's just like dip your feet in the water in that one so we're not gonna have a huge plan in that one other than like go have fun enjoy your first pro experience and just go race like follow the moves when they happen be in the mix take some risks and just learn from it and then use that to start to catapult yourself into success in future pro events but you only get a first pro race once so go enjoy it and soak it in and enjoy racing against the best in the world. Yeah, after that is actually gonna be Ironman Texas, which we have a crew going down. So Allison and Jessica Cullen are gonna be racing that in the pro field, as well as a couple of us racing in the age group field as well, uh, followed by, I think all three of them will be doing Chattanooga 70.3, which is in middle of May. So that'll be the first race we get the full pro team together, and then we'll get them all together again in Tremblant in June at the 70.3. Exciting. Uh, yeah, thanks, coach.